and I, I wanted to and I wanted to feel like we're having tea in somebody's house. We're drinking a cup of, you know, mm, drink your water, drink your tea. Let's talk. I want us to be who we are. I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to be a superstar today. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get my cup. Let me get my cup. Oh my God. Go get your cup. Yes. Let me get one too. <laughs> <laughs> welcome everyone this is Sergio Star um, welcome to my show love awaken and prosper. Today I have three of my best people that I love so much. I'm so happy that they're here. Melveda Hughes, Hilda Willis, and Ankara. Um, let's start with Melveda. You know, Bronx has talent, right? like major talent. And this is really just an opportunity for us to showcase the young people, age eight to 18, who have some talent. We want them to come out and show it. My first guest is Melveda Hughes who is currently Mind Builder's Director of the Dance Department. Malveda received her MFA in Dance from University of Michigan and her BFA in Dance from CUNY City College. She is a New York State Certified Dance Educator and as a performer, choreographer, teaching art, artist, and dance educator, her career is grounded in the simple philosophy all Feet Can Dance, the title of a catchy tune by musician singer Bobby McFerrin. Over the years, Melveda has taught dance residencies for Alvin Ailey Dance Foundation, Arts Horizon, Community Works, City Kids Foundation, and choreographed theater productions for the National Black Theater, Black Spectrum Theater, Billie Holiday Theater, and several contemporary works for the Joyce Harrigan Dance Theater. Melveda also happens to be the choreographer of my one woman show, I Didn't Cry. My next guest, director, producer, performing artist, and career coach of Living Your Art, something she's been doing for 30 years, is the creative director for India Ari, whom she has worked with off and on for 20 years. Other artists she has worked with include Danita Hathaway, Set Shakur, Duke Fakir, Jane Fonda, Gilbert Glenn Brown, Ali Mee Ballard, Fina, and myself. She happens to be the director of my one woman show, I Didn't Cry. She's also worked with the Ossie Davis Endowment for Education, the City Kids Foundation, the Tupac Shakur Foundation, to name a few. She has directed and performed on many of the regional theaters, including, but not limited to, Kenny Leon True Colors Theater Company, The Beacon, Madison Square Garden, The Mint, The Trilogy Theater, Ebony Rep, August Wilson's Theater, Triad, The Triad Stage, The National Black Theater, and she is the producer and host of Hilda's Place talk show and has been a town commissioner in Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. Please welcome my mentor, my friend, Hilda Willis. My third guest is Ankara Amenhotep. He is a musical director, vocal director, vocal coach, producer, composer, and educator. He is a 2014 and 2015 Grammys Music Educators Award nominee, the celebrity vocal coach and talent judge from three seasons of MTV's Making the Band Four, under the executive and artistic direction of Sean Diddy Combs. 
Some of his past and current clients include Diddy from Bad Boy Records, Jaheem from Atlantic Records, Day 26 from Bad Boy, Vanity Kane, K. Michelle, H E R, A Boogie, Belt Bib DeVoe, Cassie, Donnie Clang, Lil Mama, Deja, Abby Jasmine, Donna, Mike X Angel, Faith, Rob Fasari, who was your Lady Gaga's original producer and songwriter, Dominique Fishback, Gina Ray Womack, Renee Lopez, Corey John of Fella from Broadway, Stephanie Marie of American Idol, Amber James of The Voice, Jahi Winston from The Lion King on Broadway, and Shahidi Wright Joseph, The Lion King and School of Rock on Broadway. She ha also happens to be the little scary girl on the movie Us by Jordan Peele. And he has so many, many more. Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome. Sergio, can you tell us what you plan to do with this and what's your vision for this and everything? Okay, so the reason for this was it actually came out out of conversation with Hilda. And she was sharing about her grandmother and, you know, about her home remedies and how she healed, you know, the things that Hilda did herself with some onion on her baby's ear or feet or I was like, huh? And um, so I just love hearing that those things because I myself for my children, I use home remedies instead of over the counter medicine. Like I don't buy cough medicine, um, maybe cough drops is what I will do, but I don't do those things. And also because of COVID, um, I've been, me and my husband, we've always, we are always into natural remedies and things that will make us stronger because we're looking to um, transform our bodies and we do cleanses and, but all of this came from me, all of this knowledge that I have and the desire to learn even more came from being at Mind Builders from being uh, working with you guys. Um, I, that was the first time I heard about vegetarian, being a vegetarian. First time I heard about fasting. Um, I remember you guys shared um, some foods. You told us when to fast at times. I can't remember that. I want to rewind and when the best, I have a, a list of questions that I want to ask. So due to COVID, due to the fact that we want to make our immune system stronger, I want to share with my audience ways to um, be one, just the regular, um, the regular audience to maintain a healthier body. And two, for the artists, because um, I learned this because I was an artist. I was uh, being a, a dancer, a singer, an actress, and you guys were telling us what it is that we need to do to maintain our, our our instrument, you know, in top shape. So, so that's Absolutely. why. So, who's asked me a question? I answered it. It's part of. It's gonna be. So, Sergio, I'm wrong. I oh my goodness! Sorry. <laughs> yes, happen. Sergio, I have changed my name. <laughs> Sergio, it's been a long time, but I have changed my name. I know it's Ankara. I do know your name. A-N-K-H-R-A. <laughs> Make a note. And, and, yes. Yes. And let me tell you, every time I, I texted you and wrote Ankara, I was thinking mm -hmm. Safu. You want to write it down, Sergio? A-N-K-H-R-A. And it's a capital R, right? For rock. <laughs> what does that mean, Ankara? Yes, capital R. What right, does your name yeah. mean? It means uh, living the life in spirit. Ankh is, is the eternal life and Ra is the spirit. Awesome. Wow. You know what? As I was looking at your, your videos, um, I, I was doing some Google research on you guys. And I'm like, I really take, I realized, wow, I take these people for granted. I didn't know they were doing so much in the world. I really have been sleeping on what you guys have been doing. I'm like, I, I Googled, I know Hilda does Hilda's Place uh, YouTube videos and I looked at her videos and I'm like, oh my God, I am so bad. This is, I'm such a bad daughter, you know? Cause I was, I saw your videos with Tuana, who's one of um, uh, an amazing singer. 
And I'm like, oh my goodness. I want like, I really want, I, when I saw that, I'm like, I need to sit my children in front of this and I want them to look at this. Like, that's what I want them to experience because of what Absolutely. you were saying. What she was teaching to, you know, Tawana. And that reminded me of when I was in your space, you know, whenever I'm in your space, I'm learning something new anyway. And Ankara, I saw your video, which I'm definitely going to share in, in this segment. Um, and wow, so impressed. I loved all the people that you worked with. My children recognized some of the people. I'm like, I'm not me really, but they knew them. It's like my daughter, like, oh, I know her. <laughs> H-E-R-E, an artist. And Malveda, <laughs> Malveda is the one who actually pushed me to dance better. Like, um, <laughs> I really, I came in and already as a dancer, but I really, like you stretched me at, um, at PYT. So uh, I'm, I'm moving a little forward. These three wonderful people are the ones who were the director of Positive <coughs> Use Troop Theater Company, Theater Company at Mind Builders. And I believe I auditioned when I was 18 and I started when I was 19. Uh, so I think I was, and, um, and I live, and they're still in my life. It's been over 20 something years. Let's not say exactly how many years. Over I, 30. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, so like, it's, 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 it's okay. I'm, okay. It's okay. I'm 49 and fine. That's right. <laughs> You're good, baby. You're good, baby. I'm 49. They've been trying to pull wow. it out. It's oh. all right. It's okay. They, they won't tell me their age, but it's, it's okay. It's all right. But um, <laughs> we're just a couple of years older than you. That's it. Oh, oh look at that. Mm, see? But they had. So I'll, I'll tell you, I'm five years older than you. Mel is six years older than you. And Ankara is seven years older than you. <laughs> Absolutely. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> Hilda, are you telling the truth? That would be 54, 55, and 56. Oh, yeah. I don't know. See, I don't know if you're telling the truth. I don't know if you're telling the truth. You're teasing me. <laughs> we were all prodigies. Hmm. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> prodigies. Absolutely. Well, well so prodigies they were. You guys were start? definitely a, ahead of the game and as far as what I've been exposed to when it came to just being a group of grounded artists and um, I'm I feel so blessed to have had that beginning of understanding um, so much like my worth um, I learned how to you know carry myself I learned um, how to just be a young lady and you guys just really cultivated me in, in that space as a young woman. And, you know, it wasn't just, it wasn't just come in, act, sing, dance. It was more of what's going in my spirit, what's going in my mind and what's going in my mouth. So, Absolutely. so, and in saying that I want to open up the conversation and first ask you guys, um, Let's start, maybe let's start with Ankara. Um, you are a vegetarian. Um, have you been a vegetarian all your life? And if not, what made you become one? Ankara. Well, Sergio, I am a vegan. Um, oh, you're vegan, okay. I am a vegan. What's the um, difference? And is, yes, and uh, the difference is that a vegan is totally plant-based. And vegetarians, they can, they usually eat fish or sometimes they eat chicken. But a vegan is strictly, totally plant-based. Okay. okay. And I've been a vegan for 42. This is my 40, this is my 43rd year being a vegan. So um, I really attest to it. Um, and it's interesting that you're bringing this up at, at, in terms of the COVID uh pandemic that we're having because we don't hear anything on the mainstream tv yeah. about any home remedies or any alternative um health care for covid yeah and <clears throat> i mean it's just it's just like a flu when you get a flu you take vitamins you take vitamin c you rest you know um those things apply 
to COVID to keep your immune system high. I started out, um, um, I was very interested in, in, in spirituality and through learning about spirituality, I changed my diet also. So that is what spurred me to change my diet, my interest in spirituality. Yeah. Because you they know, are connected. Well, you yeah, know, I, I, I believe that. I believe connection. that now. I actually, because of you being a vegetarian, I tried it for, well, I was in, in Mind Builders. I tried I'm it vegan. for like nine vegan. Vegan. Well, vegan, yeah, I was a vegan. I did become a vegan. I don't know if I was doing it correctly because I wasn't eating any kind of meat, no cheese, no eggs, just vegetables. Plants. You were doing it correctly then, Sergi. You were. Yeah, and I lost a lot of weight and I didn't like that because I lost my butt. Like I had no booty. I mean, I didn't have any booty to begin with, but <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I need to start eating some chicken. <laughs> so that's really why I started to do Sergi, priorities. <laughs> Back priorities, then, that was Sergio. my priority. Looking good. <laughs> We had a healthier booty. It was smaller. Wait a minute, Sergio. It was smaller, but it was healthier. <laughs> it was flat, and I didn't like it. So I just started, but I did start eating cleaner as far as just eating chicken. You know, so I would eat chicken and fish, and I did that diet for a very, very long time um, until I got married. My husband got me into eating some other crazy stuff, but that's another conversation. Um, <laughs> Malveda, Malveda, how about your journey as far as learn, uh, switching to becoming a vegan or vegetarian? Well, I would say now I'm a, a, a pescatarian because okay. I do eat fish. Um, and my journey was interesting. I come from a a Southern family who relocated to New York. And um, I basically <clears throat> stopped eating pork when I was about 16, which was very unusual for my family. They truly didn't understand that. And that's kind of that is what started me on my, my food journey, trying to figure out, um, you know, what's the best things for you to, to eat? What's going to make you feel the best. I noticed in my family, there was a lot of um, issues. My brother, um, he was a truck driver. And as, as a young person looking at my big brother, I noticed he was having heart attacks and strokes at a very young age. And it was, you know, because he smoked, ate whatever. And, um, you know, he had a very stressful job, job um, being um, a truck driver. So, I, for, for whatever reason, I just decided very early on that I was going to do whatever I could do to not follow in those steps and those, those, uh, those footsteps. Wow. Yeah. And I wanted to really um, make a big change in my health. Um, so, so I started out with the pork and then um, I kind of, uh, as I became more in the dance world and community, there was a big conversation about food. Um, at that time, um, it, there was a big conversation about black girls booty and what kind of dance you could do. So if you weren't doing, um, if you were doing African dance, of course, you, that was fine. But if you were doing the modern or the ballet, there was an aesthetic that you had to conform to. So there was a conversation about that at the time that I entered into the dance world. And so that affected the, my idea of what I needed to look like and how I could get there. Okay. Um, luckily that did not last long. Um, but what did happen by the time I got to Mind Builders and then by the time I got to um, meet up with Ankh Ra and particularly you Ankh Ra, um, being a vegan had a big influence on, on my diet. And, and so then I started doing things that I had not really been doing before. Started, I was doing cleanses here and there, but um, Ankara, you dropped a lot of knowledge just, just by being in your presence and um, observing your approach to food was like a big influence for me. So that was like my, uh, you were really a big that. influence on my journey as well. Not just you guys. Yeah. So. Yeah. Look at that, Ankara. Look at the um, 
just being around what you are doing positively that what you attract and what you create in the world just by being right absolutely and right that was yeah. that's beautiful malveda beautiful thank you thank you for sharing that and hilda hilda my beautiful hilda <laughs> Mwah. tell me tell me <laughs> um about your journey i remember that you I, a little bit of what i do know i feel i think you told me that you actually were a vegetarian for a while and then you decided to come back to eating meat again and can you just tell me um what that process was for you and, and why you chose to start and why you chose to just um come back because i know you got booty it wasn't because you you lost your butt like me <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I will say that I'm going to start where I am now and then I'll go back. Okay. So I clearly eat whatever I want to eat. Awesome. The main difference for me now is that I listen to what's going on and I eat mm. according to what needs to be adjusted. Nice. So I dibbled and dabbled in a lot of things and I care not to describe each one in detail, mm -hmm. but whether it was, um, I was a vegetarian for a short while, and then I added <laughs> my fish and my chicken. <laughs> um, I've done a microbiotic diet. I've been fasting for years and years and years. So again, now I have enough information and I'm bold enough to take responsibility for whatever my choices are. Yeah. And I have enough information to undo anything that I have created. Awesome. So, I love when that. I, I started fasting um, in terms of a spiritual practice first when I came back to New York in my early 20s and I was at the National Black Theater. And so um, being in that community um, it was clearly a, a space where you could um, get all the information you needed under one roof. And because at the time, my mentor, Dr. Barbara Antier, was a vegetarian, that got my attention. But I also appreciated that in that community, people were practicing health and spiritual practices on various levels, depending on who they were what their capacity was at the time. And it was probably the first non-judgment space that I could really embrace. And by that, I mean, I had received the information long before that, but I didn't respond to the, the dogma about it. I was not willing to be in a space with people that looked at whatever my practice was and was gonna damn me to hell for it. So I had to first find a community that would meet everybody exactly where they were. Awesome. From there, the next largest community that I surrounded myself with was Mind Builders, where I met Ankara and Melveda. And there was a point in time where, you know, Ankara would be jabbing me a little bit. She'd say, <laughs> come on, Hill, you know. <laughs> You ain't gonna stop eating meat. And I'm like, well, first of all, I don't eat. So I haven't eaten pork. I had not eaten pork for a lot of years before I came to mind. But so I would say, well, wait, 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 you know, let me let me do this at my own pace, you know. Um, and I can remember, I can't remember the restaurant we were at um, in the village. And I ordered a turkey burger. And I was like the only person that was ordering anything that was meat. And so... Um, Someone had said something to me, and then someone else said, oh, you know, Hilda, she's going to say um, it's all going, oh, no, she's going to say, oh, no, somebody said, well, you know, Hilda, God would have to say, don't eat meat before she would do it. And I, I said, no, actually, God did speak to me, and he told me it's all going back to the dirt. So get off of me. <laughs> so I have always been the nonconformist in every place I've been. And so, but, but it was a loving kind of, he would jab me a little bit, but I would jab back and I 
was clear that he loved me. I was clear that he knew that I was strong and whatever my commitment was and whatever that eating practice was, it did not alter my integrity. It did not alter my commitment. It did not alter my talent. Like it did not alter any of the things that I came there to do, right? And so eventually I did give up me and I did because of a medical condition that I was diagnosed with. And so I'm a strategist. My thing was, I got this information, okay, how do I need to reverse it? How long would it take? And so my practitioner told me, and he said, if you do this for one year, you will reverse this condition. Oh, wow. So that's when I stepped into being a vegetarian because I knew that that was the map that I needed to follow, right? Awesome. And as soon as I completed that health, goal i put chicken and turkey <laughs> back on and fish back on the plate because mm -hmm. that's what i like yeah yeah then i went through another phase of spiritual development where i was very clear that i was um craving beef i'm like why am i craving beef i when i began to eat the beef what it helped me understand is just for that short period of time I needed more, I don't even know what to call it, but because of the work I was doing, mm -hmm. I needed more substance. Mm -hmm. Then I went, tried a microbiotic diet, then I went back to being a vegetarian or not. And now I'm at the point where I have enough information. Like I started, mm -hmm. I eat what I want to eat. When my body mm -hmm. says that's enough, yeah. that's enough. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to open my cabinet in my home, if you open one door, you would swear I was a vegan. Mm -hmm. Open another door, you would swear I was a vegetarian. Open another door and you'd be like, that's a little girl that was raised down south. Yeah. <laughs> I have things that if I get a craving for, it's there because I don't want to deny myself anything and it helps me not eat it. But my biggest influencer was really my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Because I noticed that she was never, a, never sick a day in her life. And I, I want to actually, I want to stop you there because I, I know you have a great story about your grandmother. And I really would like for you to share it. That's and, not uh, what I was going to say, but it's huh? okay. No, no, That's I don't know I if it, you're going to say the story about your grandmother. I oh, don't know. No. Um, but I do know I wanna, that. Um, I want to finish that sentence. Go ahead, please. please. What? The biggest thing that helped me mm -hmm. not beat myself up was understanding that I was raised in the South with a family that owned their own land and their own animals. And so what I experienced was living life without additives, without all yeah. the garbage and yeah. stuff that's food. And so that for me helped me understand other choices I was gonna make if it was going to be kosher, non-kosher. So when I talked about all the information that I started to gather, I had to come up with what was going to work for me. Yes. That's well, it. Thank you. That's a, um, that's actually very important as far as how our meats are, are really harming our bodies. And I look at my mother who's so strong and she was like, uh, my uncle had their own hog farm. Like, like they grew their own chicken. And my mom is as strong as an ox. You know, um, she's just gone through so much and I, I see her um, and I know it's because of that, that um, back then at her time, that food was really full of so much nourishment and we're not doing, we're not getting that anymore. Um, I, I, I know that we're not getting that anymore. I wanted to just, um, sorry, I, I wanna apologize for interrupting you, Hilda, but I did want to make sure I want you to share stories of um, remedies that we learned from our elders. You know, you guys are my elders <laughs> and I learned so much from you. Um, I learned fasting. Um, you know, I'm a, I, I wanted to share my, a little bit of my story in coming into to mind builders. Um, my cycle, I used to have menstrual cycles that made me very sick. 
I used to vomit and I used to have to go to the bathroom with diarrhea. I had fevers and I had that since I was 13. Every cycle, my friends would cry for me like, why does she get like this every month? And I was just so full of so much toxic. I didn't know that. When I started fasting and eating vegan to food, um, Ankara, sorry, Ankara. <laughs> I got that over there. When I started eating, <laughs> when I started eating um, a vegan diet, I my cycles went from seven days to three days. And now they still are like three or four days since I've been eating cleaner. And I no longer, I, I stopped even feeling pain in the um, cramps. Like I really, something happened in my body that was like, oh my God. And I didn't realize that it was what I was feeding my body. And you know, you're young, you're like, you know, 18, 19, you're eating McDonald's. That's what my diet was mainly McDonald's, pizza, Chinese food, chicken from the corner store. So I was eating a lot of junk food. I hardly even cooked. So that and candy bars i remember i was in college at the time and i would eat candy bars and soda for breakfast you know that was my breakfast <laughs> every morning and um so i was really like being around you guys really taught me what and i didn't know the damage that I was doing to myself until i realized the before and after effect and um i and and i'm saying that to say learning the heat, what the body, what my body went through, what did your bodies go through when you chose to like, was there, I, I know it did, but we, we, I would like to, for my audience to know, like we could go back around and we could start with Malveda and I'll start with you. Um, like what were the changes in your body when you started just changing your diet and, and, and share what, things were you doing that were a little unique that may be unique to um, the listener as far as any herbs, any way of, I don't know. I don't know what you could share. I, I think for me, um, how I experienced what the changes were was when I had my children and coming from a Southern family, and uh, telling my my family that like my son does not eat meat, you know we're we're you know we you know vegetables we're, we're vegetarian essentially, and um, how uh, they I, I really didn't give them a lot of sugar they didn't really get candy and things like that, and well first of all the response my my family was was appalled you know they said you know if your son doesn't if you don't let him go to McDonald's he's gonna hate you I'm like well maybe, but when he gets old enough to have his own money, he can go to McDonald's and get as much as he wants. But I had a, took the position that while they were young and I was in control of what they ate, that I was gonna make sure to lay a particular kind of foundation. So I saw that when my children were young and as they were reaching and as they were growing up, there were certain things that issues that they just didn't have. Um, we went to the dentist, but it was not because they had cavities. It was just because practicing good dental hygiene, like they did not have cavities until they started eating, you know, had their own money in like, you know, middle school, high school, and, um, you know, they could get whatever they wanted. So they started experimenting with certain things. And, you know, those, that's when those kinds of things started showing up. So how I was able to see the biggest change in how I had, had created my diet was how I was teaching my children and the foundation that I was laying for them in terms of, and how that showed up. And so, whereas um, uh, the, the Halloween candy, I mean, they never missed it. Um, uh, so that was, the, that was the, how I saw the change from where I came from. Like it was like a generational change, like the things that I know when I was younger, I had to go to the dentist. I started going to the dentist when I was very young and having cavities when I was very young. So that's the big difference. Mm -hmm. That's how I saw it. What natural remedies did you, did you use for them? If they, did they ever get a cold, um, you know, anything that happened? So, and, if, and, if, and if not for them, then for you, like well, what did you do for, to heal mm -hmm. yourself? What? So basically for me, um, I have pretty strong constitution. 
But what I noticed was that garlic for me was like a, like a super pill. I would just take garlic raw. And if I was feeling any kind of way, um, like a cold or something was coming on, that was pretty much always my solution in some sort of a, with some sort of a tea, I would just uh, take that garlic and pretty much that kind of anything that was trying to come down on me that pretty much took care of it. Um, now I use things like um, uh, ginger root and um, what is it? Uh, apple cider vinegar, lemon, things like that. I have my daily teas that I, you know, concoction that I make for myself um, using coconut oil um, also as something that is part of my daily tonic. And those things have just kind of, you know, kept me in a very, very good space in terms of my immune system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Can you be a little clear when you said raw garlic? Do you cut it up in yes. little pieces and just chew it? Or do you drink oh, it? Oh, no, like no, 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 no. Do you, you boil it? Chew like it. What, what you don't chew it. No, you just, uh, no, I would just. Uh, cut it in um, a couple of pieces like the size of like um, like a like an aspirin or something like that um, and just swallow it whole with, okay. with water and oh, um, wow. it would just, yeah okay my my aunt um, I was just talking to my sister and uh, we were just thinking about the things that uh, we were that we did when we were younger what our parents did my aunt had beautiful long gray flowing locks um in her um elder years and she had she took a tablespoon of oil, olive oil daily that was part of her practice and okay. constitution so it's those kinds of things that i think um set the tone and lay the foundation mm -hmm. and um you can and then as long as you are you know eating you know relatively well you do okay another thing about the menstrual cycle one of the things i learned um, also, I also had some of the not quite as uh, difficult menses as what you described, but but difficult enough. Um, I just found that having like a fruit diet, like a few days before it was due, just really cleaned out my system, mm -hmm. and it made everything um, just a whole lot easier. And eventually, you know, the periods that you know there just wasn't like you say any hardly any pain or discomfort. So it's things like that over time. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the body just it's working so hard to make you feel better. And it doesn't have to work so hard. It could be doing something else. Um, thank you, Melveda, for sharing. Um, I, I wanted to talk to, there's a story that I heard from Hilda about garlic as well. And I'm not clear, Hilda. I remember you saying something about an earache or, or... I'll tell you. Okay, something, how did you use it on your son? Can you share that with us? Yes, um, but I wanna say where all this really comes from for me. Okay. So um, a lot like Mel, I wanna, when I was having my son, at that point, I wasn't eating any bread. And uh, so Aaron actually got to come through in the first, really up until he, about five, when he interacted more with family who had more traditional practices. Um, did he even uh, know what uh, hamburger and red meat pork? He didn't come in the world with any of that. And I, he was breastfed, so I didn't do milk. I did um, apple juice in his cereal. Um, wow. So that, that was uh, good for me to be able to pass some of the things that I grew up in on. I thought the consciousness started when I was in my early 20s, but when I thought back about it, I realized that I really wasn't a sickly child. I never had menstrual issues. My grandmother, I got a chance to live with her at two very important times in my life, and she was born in 1916. So a lot wow. of the things that I came up with um, were just really about going back to the ground, back to the earth, and she was part 
Cherokee. So I had the African and the um, Native American influence. So when it came to, um, we didn't have ear infections and, and those kinds of things. Um, olive oil, it, thinking about your menstrual cycle, we weren't allowed to take baths when we had our menstrual cycle. We did not use the products that became very popular with women later. I mean, even though they existed, I was with my grandmother, so I wasn't allowed to use them. So I was probably the only girl in my class where she made my napkins. Oh. I wore the belt. Like I, so I was really mm. went a little unscathed when it came to some of those things. Oh. Olive oil, when you were sick, your, not only did we take olive oil, but when you were sick, that's how she washed your hair. You know, we have the castor oil. We, you know, we yeah. would eat garlic raw. We ate raw onion and we had eggplant. All of these things grew out of her ground. So I didn't know that they would, that was natural for me. So I got to see the benefit of it, really not until I had my child. And then when I started getting other information, I realized that it wasn't so much that I was rejecting it as much as I realized that I had just come from a more wholesome, untainted environment when it came to food. So going back to garlic, um, you know, my grandmother would put, would infuse honey with garlic, she was honey with onion. She would like, I'm, I'm here and I'll share a little bit later if we have time. The, that I'm in here visiting in Atlanta. I'm visiting with an artist who is doing some therapy. And a lot of the things, the products and things that she's making, I'm reminded that, oh, my grandma used to do that, you know? And so the phenomena of people getting information that they think is new, but it really has been around a long time. So my grandmother would take a garlic clove wrap it in a, just a thin layer of gauze, gauze, mm -hmm. put it in the child's ear, put a piece of gauze on top with a piece of tape on both ears before they went to bed. That would pull all of the infection out and it would literally be in the mm -hmm. gauze. Um, if you were having a high fever or the flu, she would take, she preferred a Bermuda onion. She would slice it put it under the bottom of your feet and you put your socks on, you send them to bed. It would pull all the toxins out. You could see it. Wow. So I came up seeing these things. So when my son started to have to go to school and go around other people that had different ways and he started to get sick, my instinct was to just do what I saw my grandmother do my whole life. Wow. So that's my, that's my, you know, my garlic story in, t in, t in terms of what you were re referencing. Um, but yeah, we ate garlic. We, we, I mean, we just would go by the river or the spring and pull creasy salad. I mean, that's just who I was blessed to, to come up with. You said creasy so salad. Even the animals. What is oh, creasy Lord. salad? <laughs> I don't know what that is. But um, I, it's, uh, I need help, y'all. It grows, it grows, it, <clears throat> it's, it grows wild. It's it's like a, like a dandelion. You know, some people, you know, make da dandelion wine or they put yeah. use dandelion in their cough syrup or the green. It's like, but it grows. I've never, I if you can plant creasy at this point in the world, maybe you can, but that's not what I grew up. We would have to search for it and then we would pull it. It would just grow wild. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really am enjoying this conversation. Um, I I just want to honor your time. I know we started a little late due to the getting everything together, and it is eight o'clock, and I am requesting another another maybe fifteen minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, you've been trained very well. <laughs> <laughs> Knows how to ask those questions. Go ahead, Hill. Go ahead, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ankara. I, um, I want to ask you, you've been, it's 40 years, and I know you, um, that you've been, over 40 years that you've been a vegan. What has changed in your instruments? And I wanted to, I want to go back around, uh, ladies, to ask you guys these things. What will you tell an artist 
in your um suppose that you are a singer um you you're a voice coach right so you work with singers Malveda, you work with dancers and tell that you work with everybody but let's say actors right let's say like like what would you advise them to do now you know during the COVID, anything that you may know that that you're doing yourself um but it's not just for the artists but you want to i want to want you to look at that and see if it if, if it falls in, into place in any way so what i did want to hear your story about real if you can tell me real quickly okay. what happened to your body did were you overweight did you lose weight when you were like what happened to your body being a vegan for so long yes i did lose weight um and it's interesting, Sergio, that, you know, being a vegan for 40 years, um, there was no tolerance for vegans at that point in time. There was no, there was no uh, listening for it. Um, I was the only one in my family. And when I came to Thanksgiving and all that, um, my family would be intensely um, on me to eat the way that they ate, right? But I was, I was, I was clear. I was very clear about the choice I had made. And um, um, right after I decided to become a vegan, I was introduced to my spiritual home, which is the Osara Set Society. And in that society, everybody was vegan. That was, that was the support system. And so, um, Sergio, um, and I'm a bit of a an extremist. I'm a, I'm a bit extreme, right? Like <laughs> like like Hilda is a bit of a nonconformist. I'm a bit of an extremist. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> so um, it didn't bother me that everybody else was eating meat and I wasn't. It didn't bother me at all because I was clear about the 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 benefits of eating a healthier diet. And what I started doing is fasting. Fasting, I fasted um, every season. Every season I would fast. And when I joined the society, the whole society fasted every season because every season is connected to an internal organ. Mm -hmm. So there were specific fasts for specific seasons. Awesome. Like, the fall is connected to the lungs, that the winter is connected to the heart, spring is connected to the liver, and summer is, is connected to, no, no, winter is connected to the kidneys and summer is connected to the heart. Okay. So the fast were designed to clean those organs. Wow, right? so wow. It, so, it just wasn't anything arbitrarily. It was it was it was for a particular um, cleansing and rebuilding of an internal organ. Mm -hmm. So um, I I really started to love to fast because you get that euphoria, you get that light feeling, you start connecting, you start seeing things differently, right? Spirits start talking to you a little bit more. Um, so yeah. I fasted a lot in the earlier days. So my Is body that... did change. I lost weight. Go ahead. Go ahead. How much weight? Yeah. Did you and I lost about maybe about 40 pounds, about 40 pounds from the beginning in my 20s to, you know, about 25. Okay. I wanted to ask you about what you would tell uh, a singer. What should they do, you know? to make them a better singer? Well, it's interesting that you're diet. doing this, this. Well, it's interesting that you're doing this platform because the health in your body, I think that an artist should look at themselves as an art, artistic athlete. Yes. And if you're an athlete, you have to take care of your body. Everything comes through the body. Everything comes through it. So you would want to take care of it. In terms of singing, it's, 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 it's so important to take you know, care of your body to make sure that you're not smoking or drinking, to make sure that you're not uh, drinking ice cold things, make sure that you're not consuming alcohol 
and coffee. Coffee dries out the throat. You want your throat to be totally um, lubricated. That's why you should drink 64 ounces of water a day. Um, that's why you should be on a healthy diet. And that's why you should be working out regularly. And you should avoid smoky locations and definitely smoke of any kind. I have lost a lot of clients, Sergio, by telling them that they had to stop smoking weed. Yeah. People look I can at only me, imagine. People look at me when I right. When I said you gotta but stop can they eat weed, it? Look at me like crazy. Huh? Can they eat the weed like like a cookie or something? Uh, a brownie? Uh, <laughs> well, it, it's 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 definitely eating yeah. booze are definitely better because they do not focus on the throat, Sergio. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, just for a solution, you you know, maybe you could say, well, you don't have to, you can, you can, you can drink it as a tea or, which is actually, I know there's some good remedies for, with cannabis sativa. So, um, but I know by, by smoking it, you kill all, all the, um, all the, it's nutrients. So it doesn't, it's just the effect of getting high, but I know right, that there's right. some health benefits, a lot of health benefits in cannabis sativa. And, and also from an herbal perspective, Sergio, for the voice, mm -hmm. lemon and honey, ginger, um, garlic, like Hilda and Mel were talking about, is good to cleanse the mucous membranes. You want to get that mucus off your vocal cords. Um, wild cherry bark is a good herb. Licorice, licorice bark and also slippery elm. Slippery elm is a little thick, um, but it's really good for the voice. But drinking a lot of water is, mm -hmm. is, is, is key. It's you know, really key. One thing that you didn't mention that I do remember you, you teaching us it was that milk and cheese causes extra mucus. So you told us, I remember right. you told us not to do that when we were like doing a show. To just stay away from those things. Right. And so, Sergio, I'm glad you brought that up because all singers should, you know, they should eliminate dairy. It causes, it causes extra mucus. It does. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah. for remembering that. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing the rest of the things that I, I didn't really know about. I, I love it. Um, <laughs> and what about, um, um, let's go with Hilda. Hilda? Tell me what you tell your artists now, as far as, um, you know, and I know you are, it is about um, health remedies, you know, but I also know that you also are a person that works with the spirit and the mind. So I don't mind you also sharing some of those things. But um, if you do talk about how they should handle um, their diet, like, um, do you at all? Yes. So one of the so i want to say about all of us sergey at the at the point that you met us what you got was three professionally working artists who had a commitment to human development yes that's, and our that's, absolutely. That. that's so, what we got so when you have what, what wherever our entry points were in terms of our health consciousness our cultural consciousness we were very clear that spiritual, cultural, and artistic alignment was critical, no matter where you entered it. And so we came all to Mind Builders with our own practices that we could share. Mm -hmm. For me, um, like fasting is something that, again, if I go back to MBT, we did every month. We fasted every mm. full moon. Um, Dr. Tier taught us the recipes to make for each organ for fasting. So if you were having an issue with your kidneys, when you came into council, it was, you need to do this kidney fast. One of the things that I think that was important and how I've adopted working with artists is because no matter what, I'm going to meet you where you are. So Sometimes we can take on a group of people like we did you all who we had the fortune of helping to raise you and, and, and approach everything holistically. Sometimes 
I don't have that, right? Uh, that time, if someone is coming to me, it's a short length of time. So it, it's for me, it's addressing what their need is. So if someone smokes, if someone does whatever it is that they do, and they're this also a fabulous gifted artist, for me, I'm making suggestions that are going to get them from one point to the next as they come into their consciousness, mm -hmm. right? That's just, that's just my approach. So, you know, I'm going to talk to them about fasting and getting that as a practice. I'm going to talk to them about the importance of, you know, if you're doing a show and you are, you have a cold and you got to push through, what is it that you drink? Yes. The tea, the garlic, the honey, the lemon, the cayenne, mm. you know, it's just for me having enough information to get that person from one point to the next. And if we keep engaging with one another, then yeah, we can get to some of that other stuff to, to look at your lifestyle change, which we, most diseases, diseases are connected to lifestyle. And mm. that's something that we can, we can change. And so I just try to use my own personal experience um, I drink coffee. I eat, I eat cheese. There are things that I know that are not good for me that I do, but I also know when I got to stop. So the best thing for me as an artist was to have the discipline to show up with the highest integrity for my job. I was help. I am healthier working than I am not working because I'm not one that's going to go to the gym. But if I'm in a musical, whether it's Mel as a choreographer or someone else, me being the artist, five, six, seven, eight, I know that if I'm going to keep my job, my ass needs to be in shape. So whatever is your motivating factor yes. to line up, then because your energy is your currency, that how you vibrate is directly connected to currency. That's what we take to the bank. So that's how I approach artists. Like if this is what you want, Uncle used to say this a lot. Um, what is, wait, let me see if I can get it right. What, how do you need, how do you need to be to do what it is you wanna do to get to where you're trying to go? Mm. And so it really is just for me, meeting artists where they are, I'm listening to what, is in the way and let's just address it. Let's take baby steps until you can get to the point where you can stand on your own. So I'm more process driven through that lens. Let's mm -hmm. attack what the immediate thing is. So mm -hmm. if it's vocal, I'm gonna I'm a drive you to a T. I'm gonna say, let's do some yoga, let's stretch. Like if you're stressed, like what are the, th meditation, which is a lot of stuff we talked about at Mind Builders. How do you calm your mind down? You know, what are those things that have, Another thing, uh, it's like, um, I think you've heard me say this before, Sergio. Your mind is a conversation machine. Mm -hmm. It has no power. The natural state of your mind is void. So what's the conversation? Are you having the conversation or is the conversation having you? Having you. Yeah, baby. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, then, and so that's to me the best way I know to unpack. Mm -hmm. So that it's bite-sized pieces. And so people can take these things and begin to grow. And as they get more and more information, by the time they leave me and walk into a Melveda, you know, they better understand one of the things you've heard all these years is it doesn't jump on you like the Holy Ghost. <laughs> by, the time they get to Ankara, by the time they get to Ankara and he put that foot down, you know, so if you can't do the dance, if you can't sing the note, you will not be casted. Or if you're <laughs> casted and you don't continue to do the work, you will just be replaced by someone who's sitting on the sidelines watching, watching. waiting. So that's mm -hmm. what it is. What What is it that you have to do? Yes, awesome. Get what you want. Yes, and and that I I definitely know for ten. <laughs> and um. Serge, no, I, 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 something real quick, Serge. What? Yes. I just want. I want to. I just want to. Uh, 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 ditto. Uh, what Hilda said about conversation. Um, this morning, uh, 
I was not going to work out this morning. And my son came over and he said, Dad, um, I didn't see you at the gym. He said, what happened? I said, well, you know, Monday is my day off. He said, <laughs> push past that conversation. Oh. He said, you're having a conversation, push past it. Yeah. Ditto, Hilda. Awesome. Darn it. Awesome. And look at that. You taught it to your kids and they throw it right back at your face, right. don't they? <laughs> but you know what? The, the, the coaching that we do, mm -hmm. we are coached more than the, the people that we coach yes. because we hear it the most. Yeah. And we coach each other. Yes. We, right. We, yeah. Yeah. Right. Awesome. I want to call you. Wait a minute. Well, let me tell you, when I got the gig for, my, for making the band, I called Hilda for coaching because I did not want to leave my builders. Oh, wow. I did not know how to tell my builders that I was leaving. I had just came back. I was there for two years. I had left in 99 and came back in 206. So just, just to ditto what Hilda's saying, I called Hilda. I said, Hilda, I don't know how to do this. She said, well, you, you just don't have to talk to them. Yeah. And what ended up was, I don't know how we got to Mel Vader's house, but we ended up at Mel Vader's and I ended up telling Madaha and Nigeria that I was leaving on tour. Madaha got a little, she got a little done. Nigeria said, I will never forget it. She said, I am so glad that you got this job because you will come back to us with more. Yeah, amen. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that story, Ankara. Yeah. Malveda, yeah. I, I don't wanna leave you um, with, because you are definitely someone who works with the whole instrument as far as movement is concerned. And um, what would you, do you tell young dancers as far as their diet and what to do to just take care of their, that their, their bodies to become better dancers. Well, you know, before we even, before I even do that, because one of the issues that we're finding is that there's a lot of um, <clears throat> body dysmorphia. You know, young women and men do not have a realistic idea of what their bodies look like. And then once you step into the dance arena, there's a lot of conversation about what your body is supposed to look like in order to be a dancer. Well, thank you. So one of the things that I've always prided, prided myself on being at Mind Builders is that we don't have that conversation about your body shape, either being um, advantageous for you to dance or to not dance. If you, all through the years that I've been there, I've made sure that anybody who steps in the door, whether they're a size six or a 56, don't matter. It's like, so I would say a size zero or a size five X, I would say that, you know, you can dance, you can move. Your body does not prevent you from moving and being able to move beautifully with grace and skill. So once that has been established and you create a safe space, that then you can open the conversation for those who are interested and in, in attaining some particular shape because they may have a particular goal. Okay. But the first thing that we always, I always stress is that who you are right now is you can dance. There's no judgment. <clears throat> There's no sense of you cannot or that you should not or that that's just too much to be moving around that nobody wants to see all of that. Um, we have just the opposite. Bigger the beautiful, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Mm -hmm. However, you come in all of your from your Africanness to your Europeanness, like whatever it is, is acceptable. And then we talk about based on where, what they want to do and and how they want to feel. Then we can start to have those other kinds of conversations. But I think the 
the the most important thing is that people just be comfortable in their bodies and in their beauty because that's that's the only way that you can be self-expressed and if you're going to be a performer that's the first thing you got to be self-expressed you have to be able to be confident you have to know that um that your body and you are you know it's one you that you know there's no uh line there's no judgment there's no you can and you cannot awesome. so at that point then everybody knows that you know we're all starting at the same place and you can take it as far as you want to go and however you want to go with it and then we just provide that support well well thank yeah. you so much Malveda for actually clearing that up for for me and um and for everyone, you know, I, I understand that that's what um, I see that now as far as I understand that Mind Builders is, was definitely like that because PYT, we, we came in all shapes and sizes. Because you, I remember you dancing with your belly with when Sierra was in your stomach, <laughs> doing <Yeah>. your taste, <laughs> kicks. I was like, okay. So yeah. that, that was wonderful to watch. So yes, you can do that. And um and 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 that I could leave it right there as far as um, but uh, we were talking about remedies, natural remedies as an artist. We're talking about um, what to do, what not to do, how we learn to become um, like through osmosis, how and our environment, how we learn to be, and just by the people you surround yourself, what it is that um, we become attracted to. And Ankara, you're the vegan that uh, allows some of us to um, learn how to become vegans or, or to try vegan a little bit and fasting. And uh, Hilda, I, I always love listening to your your stories and how you empower, you know, you just, your voice is so amazing and you, you're always teaching me new things. Every conversation I come out better. And Melveda, thank you. Thank you always for being the, the quiet mother that I could always call on and you will pick up the phone and uh, I could cry on the phone uh, and you will listen. I, I, I always appreciate that you're there for, for me. And I love you guys so much for taking the time to do this. It did go over a little, um, um, okay. but in ending um, this segment of Natural Remedies with my guests, Melveda Hughes, Hilda Willis, and Ankara, um, you guys, I would love that this, um, this information that you share can go viral and empower people to learn ways of being in this, these times that we're living right now during COVID, to know that we can just, uh, Ankara, you shared, they're not, they're just saying, put on a mask. And there's so much more that we can do. Absolutely, Sergio. You know, and so, I want to say thank you to you, Sergio, for okay. always having that passion, always going for it. Sergio, <laughs> uh, I, I just remember you at 19. And I am so proud of the stance that you're taking. And um, and thank you, Sergio. Thank you for putting this together. Yeah. 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 Yes, um, I'm just so happy that you guys said yes. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, my guests, for being here at Love, Awaken, and Prosper. I love you all so much. God bless you. Everyone who is watching, thank you for um, being here. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know if you guys have a remedy that you guys can share, a natural remedy. Um, to you know, help us in these times of COVID and keeping our bodies stronger and our immune system stronger. All right, well, thank you and goodbye. What do you say? Sergia, you know, you're such a force. You're such a freaking force. So. <laughs>